We are at day four. Now remember, you've got to really remember that creation, the six days of creation and then, and then the seventh day of rest. The first three, the first three, there are two separate three days. The first three days set up the last three days. So when you look at the six days of grace, you just divide them into two threes. Day one, two, and three, no solar system. Four and five, solar system. And that's a big deal. Days one, two, and three, uh, you don't have, a, you have an earth that's being prepared to be inhabited. Days one, two, and three. There, there are no way that we can understand a timetable on the first three days because all of our timetable, at least in our civilization, is based on a solar system. You'll see it today on day four. So theologians call day one and two the days of God because there's no way to calculate them. There's no way to scientifically understand days one, two, and three. The science that we have in our generation, which is pretty, a pretty good science, uh, wouldn't have a clue about how to figure that out. We're still trying to figure out four, days four, five, and six. So it's, it, the, so it's really interesting, the six days of creation, you always have to remember that they're day one, two, and three. No one had, the earth is not inhabitable. Four, five, and six it is. So if that's very important. Here's, here's day four. Then God said, let there be lights in the expanse. Remember, that was day three. We had the expanse that goes around the earth. The, 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 the um, astronauts call it the thin blue line. And they go through that when they go to outer space. When they leave atmosphere and go to outer space, they all go through that and they all comment about it. Even the vi recent visitors that have gone through that thin blue line called the expanse in the Bible remark about it. They, it's interesting how they talk about it. Well, here's verse 14. There was, let, let there, watch the word let. It's used three times, the word let. It's adjustive and, and that's really important that you understand that. Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs, for seasons, for days and years. So you couldn't count those. They had none of that before day four. This is day four stuff. Then in verse 15, and let them be for lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. Remember, that's a key, a key phrase. And God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night and the stars also for night. God placed them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth and to govern the day and the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. There was evening, there was morning, a fourth day. This is a big deal because this is the beginning to bring habitation to the earth, four, five, and six. And so four is setting this, setting the stage to bring in day five and day six, the habitation. That, this is really important stuff uh, here. So let's have a word of prayer. And... Um, then we'll get into morning study. Remember that as a believer, indwelt by the Holy Spirit because you live in the church age, the moment you believe that Christ died for your sins, was buried and raised from the dead, you received eight works of the Holy Spirit you can never lose in time and eternity. If you have not studied that and not aware of it, there's a little pamphlet back there called 50 Things You Received at Salvation You Should Pick Up and Take Home. It's free. Eight works of the Holy Spirit one of them is to indwell you and make your body the temple of God, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. The Holy Spirit is inside you in the church age. That's between the first coming and second coming is the church age. In order to teach and recall the word of God in your soul. 
John 14, 26. You have to be careful that you don't try to study the Bible in the flesh or carnal. Evidence of carnality in the Christian life is personal sin. Personal sin. Could be mental attitude sins, sins of the tongue, or overt sins. What do I do? Because the Holy Spirit can never leave me, John 14, 16. So how do I get back into fellowship with him? When I'm in the flesh, how do I get back into the spirit? You confess your sin. You do it in silence. You do it in privacy, but you do it. 1 John 1, 9 says, if you confess your sin, he, God, is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you. That's the work of Christ on the cross, not for salvation this time, but to the Christian life for sanctification because of the indwelling ministry of the Holy Spirit. And this is key to Bible study. So I'm going to give you a moment to do that in silence. Every head bowed, every eye closed to give you privacy. You make your confessions. It could be mental attitude types or sins of the tongue or overt sins. You make those confessions in silence so the Holy Spirit can minister the word. And so, Father, we thank you today for these that come our way, for those who are visiting with us. We pray enlightenment upon their souls today, knowledge. On the fourth day, what a magnificent day this was. Light up the earth, both in the daytime and the nighttime. The sun, the moon, and the stars. Ma, ma, ma. What a magnificent God. Worthy of praise, the psalmist is right. The writer of Psalms writes over and over in his book, hymns of praise for the mighty creator God. What a magnificent day. Day four is day five and day six. They're all magnificent, Father. But these set up our whole habitation on earth. And we're so thankful for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Always remember the separation of the first three days from the second three days. The first three days were uninhabitable. The second were inhabitable. The last, and you want to pay attention to this, the last day of the first three days, in other words, day three, and the last day of the last three days, day six, are really interesting because he says the same thing. On the last day of each division of the three days, he does a double work and says this, the earth brought forth. He said it at the end of day three, and he said it at the end of day four. The earth is now ready. In verse three, he says it, the earth is now ready to bring forth. In day, and boy, the earth is going to bring a lot of stuff forward in day four, five, and six. It's going to be amazing. So the earth brought forth, notice it's a hip field in the Hebrew. For those who are not familiar with the Hebrew language, that's the Old Testament. In the hip field, the hip field is causative. And who caused the earth to bring forth the things necessary for the life of man on earth? God. God Almighty. Isaiah 45, 18, you're familiar with it if you've been with us in our study along the way. Isaiah says, that, and it, Genesis 1-2 was uninhabitable, but now day 4 is beginning to set that up. You should read on your own Psalms 8, verses 1 through 9. In, in, in Psalms, let me just show you something. If you got your Bible, just go to Psalms 8 with me. Or just set tight for a moment. Psalms 8. It's not a very long psalm, psalms, but it's a powerful psalms about the creation. Nine verses, and this is, this is called a hymn of praise to God, our creator. And I want you to call your attention uh, for a moment. Hold your Bible where it is in psalms. I'm going to come back. I want you to go to Hebrews. Go to Hebrews with me. I want to show you this. Nine little verses and it just captured the heart of the writers of the New Testament. Watch this in Hebrews, the second chapter, 
verses 6, 7, and 8. Um, he, he's going he's gonna, to, in Hebrews, the second chapter, 6, 7, and 8. All right, hold your place. Keep them both now. Let's go back to Psalms 8. And, and he opens us up as the Psalms of praise. O oh Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth who have displayed your splendor, splendors above the heavens. I mean, you've probably sung this theme from this. How, mag, how uh, majestic is thy name, O oh Lord. And then he talks about from the mouth of infants uh, to the heavens in verse 2. And then in verse 3 he says, When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which, are, which you have ordained, what is man that you have thought of him and the son of man that you care for him? the writer of Hebrews is going to refer to the Son of Man as Jesus Christ, the man of the earth, the man of the earth. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon, the stars, which you have ordained, what is man that you have take, you take thought of him and the Son of Man that you care for him? You have made him a little lower than God. You crowned him with glory and majesty. You make him to rule over the works of your hands and put all things under his feet. Now look at, look at Hebrews. The writer of Hebrews is all over that in the second chapter when he writes, He did not subject to angels the world to come concerning which, he are, which, which we are speaking, but one has testified somewhere, and that's Psalms 8, and he quotes what I just read to you. And then he summarizes what he started when he says in Hebrews 2, for in subjecting all things to him, which is the son of man, he left nothing that is not subject to him, but now we who do not yet see all things are subjected to him. That magnificent. It's a hymn of praise. He brings it out into the Hebrew passage. He quotes this magnificent hymn. This was a hymn of the Psalms, a magnificent hymn. Well, let's go back to Genesis 1.14. Just didn't want to jump too far away from all that. But I wanted to show you what the writers la later, as they look at the creation story of God, how they began to write great hymns and, and songs about the splendor of God as a creator. Um, so... Let's take a look at, I've got four, four or five points here uh, today to get through. The fourth day will use the light, watch this now, pay attention to me. Day four will use the, the light of day one and the expanse of day two, the firmament or however your Bible describes it, to develop the solar system. Our solar system, this, was, this is how it was created. You're never going to learn that from anybody else but the Bible. The word expanse, watch this now, is used three times on day four. When I read through it, you didn't pay attention to it. I understand that. It's used three times. The word expanse is used Three times. It's used in verse 14, verse 15, and verse 17. The expanse that came out of day three and the light that came out of day one is all about the solar system. Our solar system. This is how we exist on earth is through a solar system. The fourth day shows that God is the source of our solar system. Isaiah 66, 1. In Isaiah 66, 1, my throne, earth is my footstool. He declares that's what God has said. 
Heaven is my throne. And we refer, now he's talking about third heaven. Atmosphere is one. Outer space is two. We have learned this from the word of God. Atmosphere. You have the expanse. Above the expanse is upper. And then you have the third heaven, the throne room of God. We call it the throne room of God. Not by accident, by word. It's the throne room of God. The earth is my footstool. The Milky Way that you might be familiar with contains our solar system. The earth is one of nine planets, as you well know, that revolve around the sun every 365 days. This is day four. This is day four that we just take for granted and, and don't give God any credit for our calendar or for anything else going on in our life. And we should. We should praise him for this. You understand these things? This stuff you've read about, this is day four. This is where all this stuff came into existence. And how it came into existence. Point number two, there are four divine activities on day four. Four divine activities on day four. Psalms writes about it in, in eight, Psalms 8 and 19. Psalms 19. They write about it. In Psalms 19, the writer, again, talking about the magnificent God who created the earth and heavens. Heavens are telling the story of the glory of God, he writes. The heavens, day four, the heavens and all that God has put in in a magnificent way tell the story of the glory of God. Once again, the writer has declared a, a hymn of praise about creation. Here are the four activities on day four that God did. Here's what God did on day four. First of all, it says that God said, then it says God made, God placed, and God saw. If you read that, you'll see that about God. He's mentioned four times. God said, God made, God placed, and God saw. God said, this is the power of the word of God. This is the power of the word of God in your life. God said means he spoke the word and the word became reality. You need to know that because you're to walk by what? Faith. Faith in what? The word of God. Romans 10, 70, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Listen, the God who spoke this word and created day four is the same God that speaks the word over your life and will create a new life for you. This, these are not separate. This is the same God that did this that will do that. You need to realize that. Pay attention to the word let, that's adjustive, and that's really important. It's used three times. In verses 14, 15, and 16, the word let. It's adjustive and is connected to the divine plan of God. He said in, in verse 14 and 15, these three things, these three things were created by divine decree. When he says let and then says, and it was so, listen to me now, when he says, let, and it was so, he's going back to the eternal life conference in eternity past, when God laid out the plan that he is now, he is now manifesting in time, day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six in creation. This is your week, by the way, right? Has any, has your week changed any? I mean, this government come along and say, well, it's not a week no longer. I mean, they give us national holidays, but so far they haven't, they haven't screwed up the week. All right? So here's what he says. He says, Let, watch this now. The, the three lets are really important because this is the plan of God being exercised from the eternal life conference and eternity past when God sat down with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit and laid the whole plan of God out. It is now being done in time. Right? And that's the word let, and so it was, and it was so. He says let, and, and it was so. All right, let lights in the expanse, let lights in the expanse of heaven to separate the day and the night. 
to let this is going to happen, let it happen for signs, seasons, that's weather patterns, that's summer, fall, winter, spring. Right? This is weather. This climate change. You know who's in charge of climate change? Please know you. Who's this? The government's not, not in charge of it. You're not in charge of it. But God is. Where does it come from? Day four. It comes from day four. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Right? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I'm, what day am I? Talking about day four, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, right? Okay. Just wonder if we know. Listen, he says, let the expanse in the heavens December the day for the night for, for signs, seasons, like summer, winter, days and years. That's a calendar. Would you agree? I mean, what time of the year are we in? Summer. Right? We know the day we're in. We're on the right? First day. We're, we're, today, this Sunday. First day. Right? And, and we know it's July the 10th, and we know the year. Do you know how magnificent that is? And you know that's all day four? Every bit of that's day four. And even the climate. Well, what do you expect? Well, it's summer. It's going to be hot, and we're going to get sh rain showers if you know if it, if we if it runs a pattern. It's all day four. Well, I don't know. You should read Psalms seventy four. Not now, but you should read Psalms seventy four, verse seventeen. You know what? God, you know what it says. And God set boundaries. You know what day four is all about? Boundaries. Is there a boundary for day and night? Well, he just said it. Psalms 74 is going to tell you boundaries. And that's a really a good thing. Let light expanse. Uh, he said, let lights in the expanse. Get, put lights in the expanse to give light on earth in verse 15. All right? So here's the first let. Are you with me? <coughs> It's your whole calendar. It's your whole life. This is summer. This is winter. This is spring. This is fall. I guess we only have two down here, but some people actually have four. But there it is. And then it says, God made. Asa means to make something out of something already in existence in the Hebrew. Two great lights. Two great lights. How many? Okay. Two great lights, the greater light to govern the day. What do you think we're going to call that? Sun, sunlight. And a lesser to govern the nights with the stars, right? We'll call that the moon, right? You know how many songs have been, have been recorded with the word moon in it? Amazing number. Well, anyhow, I just thought I, that, that's free. Psalms 104.19 is well worth your read on the subject, not now, later. God placed the word Nathan. God placed them in the expanse to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from darkness. That's all on day four. You know how wonderful it is to wake up and you look out to see if it's daylight yet. <laughs> then you look at the clock and you go like, nope, it's only four. Then you fall back to sleep. And the next time you, you, you look out, the daylight's there and you go like, oh, yeah. And you look over there and it says six. And you go, I get up now. Put my walking shoes on. I'm going to walk through my community before everybody gets out here and it gets hot. Does that little guy does that? Okay. And you know how it makes you feel? I mean, when the sun goes down, so do you, right? 
when we were farmers and didn't have electricity, and didn't have television, when the sun went down, we all went down because when the crow crew, cr crowed, we were all up. That was our alarm clock on the farm. Now, anyhow. God placed them in expanse to give light on earth to govern the day and the night and to separate the light from the darkness. Then it says God saw that it was good. Now, when God says something good, it's mighty good. <laughs> right? It's good. You always want to pay attention because sometimes God says it's perfect. You go like, wow. I mean, does that not stagger you? I mean, when God says something's good, I figure, well, whoa, this is really good. But when he says it's perfect, holy macro. And you know he says that sometimes? I mean, he's going to say all things work together for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose, his plan. All things that work together for good. Sometimes he says perfect. And that's a big time in it. Like Ephesians 4.13. Oh, yeah. Well, now you write it down. It was good. He, he, saw, he saw it. And God said it's good. This phrase was used on every day but two. Seven days, seven days, six days of creation, one day of rest. On the seven days... He says it's good on every day but two days. He doesn't say it on the second day, and he doesn't say it on the seventh day because on the seventh day, everything's perfect. On day two, he doesn't because all that water that's been held up is going to be used to flood the earth in Noah's day. You know that. I've taught you that. All right? Psalms 136 and other psalms you should read about. He uses the concept of God alone. I mean, who even thinks about that? Now, when he says that, he means no one else. God alone. But I find that to be really interesting. You put those two words together. Well, anyhow. You know what Psalms... 136 is all about? Listen to me. His loving kindness lasts forever. That's a whole Psalms on that great, that great theme. And many Christian hymns have been written off from this idea. His loving kindness lasts forever. He uses it in the Psalms 26 times. Loving kindness is everlasting. His loving kindness. Boy, if there was ever a Psalms that you should read every day of your life, no matter what circumstance your life is in, you should read that Psalms. Because whatever's going on in your life, you're not alone. Whatever's going on in your life, you're not alone. And not only is God with you and will never forsake you, 13, you know, you know, Hebrews 13. Not only will he not leave you, forsake you, but his loving kindness that he embraces you with in Christ is forever. His loving kindness towards you in Jesus Christ is forever. You go like, well, I don't know. I have done such and such. Listen, in Christ if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. You should thank God every day that you believe that Jesus died for your sins, was buried and raised from the dead the third day so that you could enter into the loving kindness of God that is forever. It's not based on your character. Listen to me. It's based on God's character. He said, I will love you from this day forever and forever is forever. You are the one. New every morning. Well, it's a wonderful Psalms. I, I encourage you to read Psalms 136. I encourage you to read it every day of your life. Point number four, three. 
the fourth day lights in the expanse were the second phase, pay attention, was the second phase of the separation of light and darkness. The separation of darkness. In Je uh, from Genesis 1-2, there was darkness wrapped the earth and darkness covered the earth. The first phase occurred on day one when God separated the light from the darkness and called the light day and the darkness night. That's in verse 4, chapter 1. In the second phase, it occurs on the fourth day when God made two great lights. One is greater than the other, the light of the day and the light of the night. The greater light, the sun, would govern the day and the lesser light, the moon, and the stars to govern the night. Here's my fourth point. The lesser light of the moon and the stars that we go out at night, and aren't they magnificent on a nice, clear night? Isn't that something? I mean, one of the things I used to love to do when I would go to the oceans, whatever ocean, for me it was Lake Michigan as a kid growing up, and I would go sit on that. I used to watch a little bitty kid, the sun go down into the ocean, right? You watch the sun go down, it goes down into the ocean if you sit on the bank of Lake Michigan. And I would say to my grandfather, uh, he would be sitting next to me. That's one of the things we did after we milked the cows, went down there. And they'd say, Ronnie, what just happened to the sun? And I went, I don't know, it went into the ocean. It went into the lake, Grandpa. And he went, yeah, and you know what? In the morning, it would come back up. In the morning, it would come back up. I used to sit there as a young man. As I got older, I would sit there and I would watch the sun come up as it went down. I couldn't wait to be old enough to go down and sit on the beach all by myself. And one of the great joys of my life when I go to the places that have oceans is, is to watch the sun come up. Is that not magnificent? A whole new day by the, as a gift from God. A whole new day, a gift from God. And for a guy like me sitting there, that's day four. I go, are you not? And it makes you want, it just wants you to write a Psalms on the majesty of God. It just, I mean, your heart just goes like, I just, and you go, oh, wait, it's already been written. Let me read it. It's just, it's just magnificent. Jeremiah 31, 35 writes, thus, the, thus saith the Lord, who gives the sun for light of the day, and fixed orders, that's boundaries, fixed order of the moon and the stars for the light by night. We just take all that stuff for granted. We should take it, we should take it for grace, shouldn't we? Take it for granted, but take it for grace. I mean, God set this whole magnificent up for you and me, just for you and me. The earth to be inhabited. All of this is about putting mankind on the earth as a gift from God. It's just, it's just so overwhelming. I study this stuff and I just get overwhelmed. How is, this is so, how can I make this simple enough for the people to understand how magnificent this is? The moon orbits the earth. 29 days, 12 hours, 44 minutes, 2.8 seconds. Who's counting? I mean, who does that? There's a lonely man. Man, who does that? But there it is. The Hebrews fixed their calendar on what's called the lunar or the moon calendar. Scientists estimate, we know how that works, don't we? We've just went to COVID by the science, so we know how this science works. But here's what they, they estimate that two, 200 to 400 million stars are in our Milky Way. Well, that, that doesn't, that's not what excites my heart. Here's what excites my heart. God counts the number of stars and gives names to all of them. Think about that. <laughs> I can't keep up with a handful of names. He counts the stars and names them.
and they're in the millions. Boy, there's a mind we need to set down and grab a hold of in it. And we can. It's called the Word of God. The Word of God. Psalms 147, verse 4, says that it's an accurate count. <laughs> I mean, how else could it be? I mean, who's got that much time? Yeah. Could you imagine? How would you? I mean, we're having trouble giving names to hurricanes. Right? We get, what, 25 or 30 a year. I don't know. Who's counting? Somebody is. Yeah, some, I hear you. You know one of the stars that's important? I put it on your paper. Matthew 2.2, 2, which is talking about Numbers 24.17. And you know why you put a star at the top of your Christmas tree? Right there. It's because of Matthew 2-2, 2, 2, Numbers 24, 17. That's why you put a Christmas. I don't know why you do. Maybe you do it out of tradition. Maybe you don't know why they, the Christians put a star in the Christmas tree, but that's why they put it, Matthew 2-2. Two, two. You know what brought the wise men to, to right? Who brought the, the three wise men? They call it three wise men. Right? Listen, a star, a special star. Of all the stars that are named, there was one that had the name of Jesus Christ on it. Matthew 2 2, which is a fulfillment of Numbers 24 17. I just thought it was kind of interesting. I put it on your paper, no extra charge. God used the stars to assure the promise to Abraham and to his descendants in what's called the Abrahamic covenant. He said in, in Genesis 15, 5, now look towards the heavens and count the stars if you're able to count them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. <laughs> Who better to say that to than Abraham who couldn't have any kids for a while, right? He struggled. I gave you other passages that would be well worth your reading. Let me close with my final point. While the light of the sun and the moon govern the day and the night light, God governs both of them, and never forget that. He governs them all. And I'm going to give you some biblical examples of why God does it, and it's better for him than anybody else. Could you imagine if the government had charge of that, what kind of mess we'd be in? Uh, thank, thank, thank God. Right? We will mention five occurrences in the Bible when God inter intervened or interfered with the fixed order of the fourth day. You should read Matthew 16, 1 through 4 on your own when he introduces you the signs, the signs of the time. And he says, Every, all these Jews were wanting to have sign here and a sign there. He said, you can't even discern the, 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 the fixed order that you have. Listen to five occasions. Now, you will know some of these. You just probably never put them together. In the ninth plague of the Exodus, three days of darkness, God intervened. You understand? He stepped in. You know the story. You just probably never thought about it. During the war between the Amorites and the Israelites, Joshua commanded the sun and the moon to stand still. You can read about it in Joshua 10. It is called the longest day in human history. The Bible records 23 hours and 20 minutes. We're 40 minutes short. King Hezekiah asked for a sign of healing from a fatal illness. It involved the sun and the shadows of counting. In 2 Kings 20, the missing 40 minutes 
of Joshua was found in that and put back in. It's amazing. The 10 step back was the 10 degrees of the sun that made that 40 up. Listen, do you realize how important God is in your life? I mean, how important is he? How, how majestic is him, is who he is in your life? Here's where it gets fun for you and I. The fourth time was at the crucifixion of Jesus Christ when they hung him on a cross. God calls darkness over the land from noon to three. In fact, that's so prevalent that they made a movie called High Noon. Remember that? Nah, you didn't. <laughs> Why would I even ask you? <laughs> uh, young people go, like, what is he talking about? Young people under 50. So, darkness over the land, I mean, all of us know that from noon to three is high noon. I mean, it's, if it's going to smoke, it's going to smoke, isn't it? I mean, it smokes. It gets hotter. He intervened. That's a day four intervention. In daylight, right? Intervened. You can read about it, Matthew 27 and Luke 23. From the sixth, they call it from the sixth hour to the ninth hour, which is noon to three. And you know, not only that, listen, the Bible says the sun was obscured, and at the same time, God tore the inner veil of the temple from the top to the bottom down did away with the whole temple complex. Isn't that interesting? Well, you can read about it in these passages I gave you. Jesus spoke from the cross at the end of those three hours, and he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Right? And he died. And you know what he did? He quoted Psalms 31.5. What he did was quote 31, Psalms 31.5. He quoted Psalms 31.5. He, he quoted the word of God from his soul back to the Father. This is what he wants from you and I. He don't want you just to learn it. He wants you to live it. And living it means I'm able to talk to God about what's going on in my life. From a page, number, and a scripture Gosh, people, does not any of this come to light in your life? Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. He quoted Psalms 31.5. Listen to this. In his second coming, the sign of the second coming of Jesus Christ is that the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give light, and the stars will fall. It's fall right out of heaven. You can read about it, Matthew 24, Acts 2, Luke 21. I wrote all these on your paper. The heavens will shake, the stars will fall, the sun will turn to darkness and the moon into blood. He quotes Joel 2. It's quoting Joel, the second chapter. Here's my final point on the bottom of your paper. One of the features of the fourth day solar system was signs, season, days, and years, our calendar. It established the earth annual calendar and daily time zones of the earth. You know, you fly through time zones, right? That's all about the solar system of day four. Here's my point. In Psalms 31, in, in uh, is Ecclesiastes 3.1, he says, there is an appointed time. Now think about that. There is an appointed time. Where did time come from? And where's this appointment? It's your life. 
There is an appointed time for everything in regard to your life in the plan of God. Every Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday is covered in the plan of God. Every second, every minute, every day, every hour, every bit of your calendar is covered in the plan of God. Do you understand that? That's day four. God created all that for you and for me. There is an appointed time for everything in the plan of God. There is a time for everything, even under the heavens, for your life. You should be thankful for that today. How is it possible that you don't pay attention to God, but you do the week? Where do you think your week came from? How do you think the 24 hours you got came from? How do you think anything that you eat, live, and exist, the air you breathe, isn't from God? That's day four, five. Your whole existence on this planet is because of God. And one day this entire planet will be changed by God, not by man. You should pay attention to God Almighty in your life. I don't know what your journey in life is. I don't know where you're headed. But I know wherever it is, you shouldn't go there without God Almighty through Jesus Christ. You go into school, you're going into marriage, you're going to get engaged, you're changing jobs, you got health issues, whatever is going on is covered in the plan of God. You know, people go into hospital, the first thing they ask you is, do, do you have insurance? I tell them, no, I have something better. They, you've got something better than insurance, Mr. Adama? I said, yes, I have assurance. <laughs> assurance beats insurance any day of the year. And they go like, oh, I've never heard that before. I know, but I'm going to tell you. I'll take assurance any day over insurance. Right? I'm not saying you shouldn't have insurance. I'm just saying you can't have it without assurance. Assurance is the greatest of the two. Father, we're thankful today for these that have come our way to study with us in the book of Genesis and the creation story. Today we've looked at day four. It is a day of our whole existence. We run our calendars, our time. We go to work by it. We come home by it. We go to bed by it. We get up by it. We're crazy in the head because we've thrown you out of our system, America. Now we think some of the dumbest things about climate and weather and all of these things. Our educational system, Father, is just pathetic because we... We think that if we teach God, it will poison the minds of the children. Oh God, how have we slipped so far in America to think that way? May we be bold in the church to reestablish that. To reestablish the fact that we need God, we need him every day, and he is more than available. We need to bring him back into the public square into our educational system, into our daily lives, into the church of Jesus Christ. Well, we believe that there's something better than what man can give you uh, to, to solve your problems, whether it be a pill or insurance or whatever it is, it's the assurance that God will never leave me or forsake me. He will be there to walk me through every step of the way, that he's created all this for my benefit, not for his. And it declares, it screams out, the creation screams out of how majestic God is. Oh, Father, may we come back to that. As America, I pray for that, Father. I pray for that. I, pr I pray that we would be the beginning of that in our own hearts, in our own church, in our own community. I pray for Moody, Father, in St. Clair County, that we would not go the way of the world, but we would go the way of God. For we've made our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.